It's a long gospel, but a beautiful God for Is the Lord in our midst or not? After the leaving from Egypt the cro- and the crossing of the Red Sea, the Jewish people led by Moses took to the road in the desert to reach the promised land. At first, the journey was full with energy and enthusiasm. They raised a hymn to the Lord. However, soon the difficulties began, the heat, serpents, hunger, and especially thirst. Finding water in the desert is not easy. And the people think they are being led to certain death. They begin to doubt the faithfulness of God to his promises. They grumble. They try to test the Lord. They ask themselves, is the Lord in our midst or not? Something affects our body, sometimes affects the way we think and the way we act. I have some friends who escaped from Vietnam on the boat after 1975 to find another place to live. And in the ocean, they have a lot of water, but they could not drink because they sea water. Someday, they, after one week, they, they liked the water, the fresh water. They share with me that at that moment, if we cannot control ourselves, we like the animals attacking, even killing to get water. But for them, luckily, they have the rain, so the rain keeps them alive. And later, they were rescued to another country. So today, the Jewish people thirst for water and they grumble against God. God responds to this challenge in his own way. He didn't punish them, but asked Moses to bring forth water by striking a rock. And he said, I will be there. The Lord will be there. God wants to show his love for them. He wants to let them know that the water was not the result of their efforts, commitment, or ability. It was a gift, a complete free. The experience of the Jewish people that comes out from Egypt is repeated in our life. We are sinners. God bring us out from the land of slavery of sins and begin our journey. The first moments of a new life can be very peaceful. Then begins the inevitable regret, doubts, or hesitation. During difficulties and the uncertainties of life, we can also think that God has abandoned us and that our hope does not have a solid foundation. Today, St. Paul assures us in the second reading, hope is not founded on our good works, but God's love. God loves people, even if they are against him, while they refuse his love and despite him, he sent them his son. Jesus is the rock that gives water of life. The water from the rock in the desert quenched the thirst of the Jews. Jesus is the living water that quenches our spiritual thirst on the way to heaven. And during this journey, 
our soul thirsts for God. We thirst for living water. And Jesus is the only one can give us this living water. And this happened to the Samaritan woman in the gospel today. Jesus said to her, if you knew the grief of God and who is saying to you, he would have given you living water. The Samaritan woman thirsts and she comes to get water from the well. She also thirsts for other things. She has five husbands, but she's still thirsty. And the water from the well can quench her thirst temporarily. She will thirst again. And she has to come back to get water again. But the living water from Jesus Christ, the love of God, the truth of the Holy Spirit, the salvation will quench her thirst, spiritual thirst, and she never thirsts again. And I think the thirst of the Samaritan woman is the symbol of the most personal needs of people. The need of peace, love, hope, happiness, and of God. These are the needs that every human being experiences. As the water of the well cannot quench the thirst of the Samaritan woman, no material thing can satisfy the need of human beings. The living water that Jesus promises is of another type, special. This is the Spirit of God. This is a love that fills the heart. When we let ourselves be guided by this Spirit, we get peace and do not need anything else. Only a person who meets Jesus Christ, who discovers that He is the Savior of the world and welcomes the gift of His water, feels that own hungering and thirsting can be satisfied. So during this Lent, we have adoration on every Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And this year, we will have 40 hours of continuous adoration. Together with the Holy Eucharist, adoration is a wonderful moment that we can meet Jesus directly, talk to him, listen to him, give our tiredness, rest in him, receive his grace, drink the water in the salvation and holiness. My brothers and sisters, in the Eucharist, the Lord now is in our midst as he was at the rock of Horeb and at the well of Jacob. He called us to believe. I am he, the one that loved you dearly. I am the living water, welling up for eternal life. So let us come to him, and let us continue to tell other people the joy and peace experienced by those who meet the Lord and drink his water.